You know what makes me mad? It's when a young guy gets engaged and then Christians start joking about the fact that, oh, it's the old ball and chain. You see, what it does is it immediately puts a wet blanket onto the epic vision of what that young man is setting forth into. And I, I want to take that wet blanket and I want to, you know, ball it up and huck it 10 million miles. It bothers me so much because the exact opposite is what I feel the Spirit of God wants to do for our generation, is to give them a vision. So what I always like to do is lay out a vision of how beautiful marriage is, how beautiful marriage can be. I mean, we're supposed to, it's supposed to be a taste of heaven on earth, technically, according to Scripture. Right now, most of us joke, say, are you sure you didn't slip up and mean a taste of hell on earth? And that's the old ball and chain line again. But just because our generation has fumbled through marriage does not mean God doesn't intend something grand for it. So what I love to do is paint this epic picture, this beautiful picture of a man and a woman working together and in harmony, serving one another, loving one another for a lifetime, growing old and gray together. And what's interesting is instinctively, everyone wants it. I remember there was a George Barna survey years ago. And it was, I mean, this, is, this must be 20, 25 years ago, right? And it was, what is the number one desire you have in your life? And asked a whole bunch of like collegiate age. And... Uh, the answer was as shocking then as it would be today. And it was to be married to one person. Listen, but there was more. For a lifetime. Isn't that interesting? And it, I was just as shocked as if, as if it came out today, back then. I mean, it wasn't that much different back then, 25 years ago. And I remember thinking, whoa, in other words, it's hot-wired into us. We desire this, but most of us don't believe it's possible. You see, if you don't believe it's possible, you're not going to go after it. If I don't know a bus is going to come to this corner... I'm not going to go out and wait for it, right? The same is true with the kingdom of heaven. All of the benefits of Christ's kingdom, you're not going to wait at the corner for them or expect them in your life if you don't believe that they are possible. If you don't know that God has promised it and you don't know that he's faithful to his word, well, then why would you hope for it? And yet, what if we caught the vision for this? What if we could see what God intends? One of my questions that I've oftentimes asked is, what would you be willing to give up? in order to get that. If you knew it was possible, what would you be willing to give up in your life in order to get it? You know, ask me. I'd give up everything. What if, what if someone came to me and asked it a little differently? Okay, Eric, with what you have with Leslie, what would you be willing to give up moving forward to keep it? <laughs> everything. This is, this is so abundant. When you understand the beauty of relationship, when you understand the beauty of family, if you can taste it, you just sort of have to trust me right now because if some of you haven't tasted it, you don't understand, but it's worth sacrifice. It's worth giving up everything. And so all these people are always complained about what they have to give up. Oh, you know, they're moaning about this. God asks for too much. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute here. God asks for too much. Okay, think about the gospel. Jesus gives everything. And what does he ask for us, from us? Everything, right? But what is our everything? Our everything is like a handful of pebbles. What is he giving us? He's given us everything. The kingdom of heaven, his inheritance. This God, you know, if you were to travel uh, for a million years, I think it's even more than that, but a million years at the speed of light, you get to the next major galaxy. That's a million years at the speed of light. And that's, that's how far away the next major galaxy is. And it's estimated that there's over 200 billion galaxies in the, in, in the universe. It's like smoke coming out of our ears type of stuff, right? And God possesses it all. And he says, here, here's what I'm bringing to the table. And what are we bringing to the table? A handful of pebbles. And we're concerned about equity. Jesus wants to give you the fullness of his life. Bring your handful of pebbles and lay them down. Give him all that you are, all that you have, all that you possess, all your hopes and dreams, and let him give you his. I guarantee you, you will never regret your decision. If you'd like to take these ideas deeper, join me for an eight-week course on honorable manhood.